Welcome to part 22 of rebuilding a very old horizontal steam engine. This is finishing and the first run. This is the damaged eccentric and I need to mend it or do I make a new one? No, I will repair the existing eccentric because once again this is what I would term a sympathetic restoration. A new build would have been quicker. First of all I face off a piece of cast iron and then I part off a disc. Here once again is the broken eccentric and here is the new disc. And next it's a Loctite 603 extravaganza. The old eccentric mounted in the chuck on a mandrel held with Loctite 603. And I proceed to remove the damaged part of the flange. Then using more Loctite 603 I stick the piece of cast iron that I parted off earlier onto the end of the eccentric and I make a hole three quarters of an inch in diameter in it. Then I remove it from the chuck and drill two holes one eighth of an inch in diameter that I then tap 4BA. After which I screw in a couple of 4BA bolts. Any 4BA bolts will do for the moment. These are some brass countersunk screws. After this I heated the piece which allowed me to withdraw the mandrel. Then when it had cooled I undid the two bolts and the front part fell off as well. Then I drilled the holes a little bit deeper and tapped them both 4BA all the way down. After drilling the holes in the outer cap, clearing size for 4BA which is 964 I made a couple of studs that were lock tightened into the main body of the eccentric and bolted the new front piece to the eccentric. At this point I drilled and tapped the eccentric 2BA at the deepest part. This meant that I could clamp the eccentric to the crankshaft rather than having to key it. I then took this opportunity to clean up the eccentric strap and it cleaned up ok. Here you can clearly see the hole that I drilled in the eccentric and threaded 2BA. So this is just grub screwed onto the crankshaft, a much better idea, because using an allen key through the oil hole of the eccentric sheave, I can move the position of the eccentric on the crankshaft should I need to retard or advance the engine's timing. I've been putting this off like a put off cleaning the con rod. This is the valve rod and I'm giving it the usual once over with many things. Flapper wheel, needle file, sandpaper, etc. And finally it comes up somewhere near. Once again I don't want it to be pristine. This is not a pristine engine, it's very old. After setting the eccentric to 90 degrees to the crankshaft and setting the valve equidistant travel over the ports in the valve chest, it's time to bolt on the steam chest cover, pipe some compressed air to the engine and see whether it works. For the first run it's a good idea to use low air pressure. This is very low air pressure, about 10 or 15 psi, but the engine seems to run ok on it. I'm not too suited with my exhaust amplifier. To make an exhaust amplifier the tube needs to open up internally, but it's actually deafening, it's too loud for the camera. So I'll put a pipe on it to shut it up and it sounds a lot better. The engine runs pretty well really, but it's not perfect. The steam chest cover still leaks because it's too thin. I will have to seal that. And inside the steam chest, the valve is not quite what it should be. The way it passes over the exhaust and inlets, it's very close. And it is blowing a little bit at the end of each stroke. That's easily fixed, I'll do that shortly. And then of course, there is the flywheel run out problem. And a lot of people have sent me messages telling me how to do this. I think I've got a fairly good idea how to do that, but no, I'm not going to bore out the flywheel and I'm not going to sleeve it. I'm just going to creatively use some shims, like they did in the old days, and it will run quite true when I've done that. As far as I'm concerned, I've had to do far too much to this engine to make it a practical proposition. I've enjoyed doing it, I like a challenge, but this has gone a bit too far really. And I'm quite pleased with it in a lot of ways. It's very powerful. I'm putting a lot of pressure here on the flywheel. I will be steaming this very shortly in the garden with my coal fired boiler. Thanks for watching this series and I hope you found it useful. I still learn something new from every steam engine that I work on.